In my last two videos, we started transforming this formal dining room into a movie slash game room, and that meant some dark paint on the walls. So I did this chocolate brown on all the walls, including the ceiling. I got to see the sectional recovered that I found on the side of the street, including this hutch I found at a thrift store for a couple hundred dollars, laid down the rug, and got the coffee table in place. Hi everybody, welcome back to part three of our movie room makeover. As you guys saw in part one and part two, we have done quite a bit in here. This room was originally yellow, it got painted Rojo Marone by Sherwin-Williams, and then we brought in a bunch of the furniture, including the incredible couch that I found on the back of a pickup truck and had reupholstered. So that is now in the space. In this video, we're adding a bunch of the final touches. So one thing that I actually already did last night, which I'm gonna put some clips of and overlay here, are the curtains in here. I actually wasn't thinking too much about curtains until kind of after we got everything in here and I realized how intense the sunlight was in the space. So as you guys can see, when I pan over here, it's kind of hard to tell, but there is a beam right along the edge of these windows here. So I am actually going to be creating a DIY valance that's going to be going over the top of the beam. That way we're able to hang curtains on the underside of the beam. Um, so it's going to cover it, but it's going to be like a temporary yet permanent solution. Like it's not something we're going to be taking down, but it is something that you could remove if one day in the future I wanted to take it off, you know, um, the beams will still be there. So we're going to start with that project today. I actually went ahead and got some plaid fabric at a fabric store yesterday and it was affordable. I could not believe the price. It was only $20 a yard for linen fabric, which I thought was so great, but I went ahead and dyed it last night with some dark brown writ dye in the bathtub. Never done anything like this in the terms of a large piece of fabric I'm dyeing. I've always just dyed like small little projects here or there and it actually turned out pretty good. I washed it in the washing machine and then dried it overnight and we took it out this morning and this is what it looked like. So let's actually start mapping out this valance situation. To create your valance, the first thing that you're going to want to do is figure out how long you want it to be. So I actually measured the length of my beam and then I transferred that to a one by eight pine board that I picked up at the hardware store and then just cut that down using a circular saw. We are gonna be hanging this with these little uh, picture hanger hooks, and these essentially go on the back of picture frames or like art pieces, and we're gonna be adding one on either side, but what we're gonna do is actually find the placement, drill a hole all the way through the piece of wood where uh, we're gonna need to essentially hang this up, so kind of like right here-ish, and then put it up on the wall so that we can mark exactly where we're gonna need to hang it on the wall, if that makes sense, or on the beam, so we could put a hook on the beam. So I'm marking exactly where the hook is going to be fastened to the actual oval part of that hanger. And then I'm gonna use a drill bit that's wide enough for me to get a pencil in there and mark. This is all gonna be covered by batting and fabric, so don't worry about that. Once you have your hole drilled, I just screwed in that picture hanger hook. And then Justin and I ended up just kind of placing this where we want it to go. So this is kind of where the valance is gonna be hanging. And I screwed that hole wide enough, that way I was able to use a pencil to mark where I want those hangers to be, because then our hook is going to be in the perfect spots and when it's all fabricated it's just going to be easy to hang this right up so these are the hooks that I'm using and the reason I'm using these picture hanger hooks is because you just use two tiny nails to actually insert them and it got really blurry here so sorry about that <laughs> I'm in a music video effortless beauty looks always <laughs> here's an accurate depiction of what hammering those in looks like and yes that hook is now up so we could hang this I just wanted to test to see if it was going to hang perfectly and it looked incredible so now we can actually get to fabricating this hello I am currently at a Jake Arnold for Creighton Barrel event because he came out with this incredible, beautiful collection with Crate and Barrel. His work is honestly some of my favorite work. Probably should get my phone before I leave it. Just look at this chair. Look at this. Are you kidding me? This chair is everything. Look at the fabric and the iron arms. It's just screaming to be in my Spanish style home, I do think. The little lumbar. <gasps> Look who it is. Oh, this was caught on camera. You guys, this is my first time meeting Arvin. <gasps> Hello. Falling out of love, falling into this place. I'm telling you, I know I get down, but can I erase? You are more than us, and I just pray. Struck a little to keep 
So we're going to be creating both a valance and two curtain panels from this fabric. I ended up getting, I think, nine yards, I believe, and it ended up being the perfect amount. So I cut this out just to the width of our valance to make sure we had a little bit of extra on both sides because we are going to be stapling it on the back side. So what I did here was I actually used a moving blanket as opposed to batting. I had this on hand, so I figured I might as well just use a moving blanket. I stapled the moving blanket down first, and if you do not have an electric stapler, wow, you guys, is this a lifesaver? I've always always had just your know your generic handheld stapler but this one works so good highly suggest I'll link it below now I'm cutting off the excess of that blanket we're also going to be wrapping it around the sides and this is just such a simple reupholstery job there's no detail to it at all the hardest part was actually keeping the plaid line straight when we were upholstering but the trick to that is really just to use a bunch of staples. If you have a fabric that is linear or you don't want it to stretch in any weird direction, just use a bunch of staples on your first side that you staple down. So the first area that you staple, use literally across the entire thing staples and then when you pull it it's not going to pull in any weird direction that's just a little tip that i have when i did this plaid we actually had to do it twice because the first time we only did staples about every like six inches or so and as you pulled it you were able to see that so then i went back and did staples probably every half of an inch and this is how it looked like in the end and for the actual curtain hanging hardware i just got two small ikea brackets and just used one screw in each of them and used this really skinny ikea rod which is going to be fully covered by the valance once we hang that up which was the reason for creating that and we are going to need some curtain panels but believe it or not these are five minute curtain panels I swear to you guys so I just steamed or ironed down one end and just sewed it with my sewing machine this is going to be our bottom hem and it's the only sewing that I did on the entire curtain you can also just use like a double-sided tape if you want to I am going to be keeping the lefts and right sides just as a salvage edge of the fabric because I actually liked mine it had a little bit of a frayed look to it which was kind of cute and I cut off that excess along the bottom there. I used curtain rings and just clipped our top edge, which is just a raw edge that was cut from the fabric. So we're just clipping that to the top because the raw edge will be hidden by the rings and also under the balance. Once you have your panels hanging in place, we just clipped this up. And the great thing is, is you can take this down, you can reupholster it, you could change out the fabric if you wanted to in the future. But I love, love, love this plaid fabric. It's great. And it's lit up really bright like that because of the lighting we were using at night. Hi! So Los Angeles is currently um, essentially flooding, so I haven't been able to film the last, like, I'd say three or four days, and it's been so dark in the room, which is why I didn't get a video up this last Sunday. It just, I couldn't even film. It was so, so, so dark in there. And it's finally sunny today. We are ready to go film. And I ended up actually spending the entire day in bed yesterday with the rain. It was such a vibe. Um, I lit some candles. It was a really calming day. It was really fun. And I realized yesterday how much having a good quality mattress is important. You're spending a lot of your life laying down, if you think about it, a good third of your life. And my first choice when it comes to a mattress is a Helix mattress. If you have never heard of Helix, it is such an incredible company. I have used their mattresses in almost every makeover I've done in the past two and a half years, in my parents' room, my room. The main reason is because I actually let the client per se, or myself, whoever it is, take the sleep quiz. And the sleep quiz pairs you up with a mattress that is perfect for your sleeping preferences and your body type, which I love because I feel like mattress shopping can be a little challenging, but Helix makes it extremely simple and easy. The mattress is shipped directly to your doorstep, which I also find lovely. Like, I just love how it comes packaged up in a box. You unroll it. It's actually kind of fun. Um, and it just expands right there in your bedroom and turns into the most comfortable, plush, lush mattress ever. And if you've been following my journey here on the channel, you guys would know that I've been open with you guys about my sleeping problems in the past. I've had very, very bad sleep problems. I feel like a lot of creatives do. And I can definitely attribute better sleep to my Helix mattress. Before this one, I had just a generic mattress. I believe it was just from like a discount mattress supply store um, and it just really wasn't the vibe and of course mattresses aren't a cheap or easy purchase you know it's something you want to make sure that you do love so the great thing about helix is that they actually offer free shipping in the u.s they have a 10-year warranty and flexible payment plans along with a hundred night sleep trial so if you do not like your mattress after 100 days they will come pick it up for you and no you do not have to put it back in the box so definitely visit helixsleep.com slash drew scott to get 20 percent off of your mattress plus two free pillows
The curtains look unreal. I absolutely love them. Now the top of the curtains are getting lit by the light. Because the light only really projects up. So when it's on, you kind of see more of the brightness here. But these look so good, you guys. The color looks incredible. Just even the like tone of the curtain when they're in front of the window. Like if we actually draw them shut, I want to show you. Like if we were to shut them, look how good that looks. I think it looks so pretty in the plaid. Everything lines up nicely. Like I'm very, very happy with how these turned out. I also got in the mullions that I ordered for the windows and this is what they look like. Same exact Etsy shop that I've ordered all the other ones for, which I'll link it for you guys below. I think their store is CNC Specialties and these are just cut out of MDF wood. So they're actually just going to be inserted into the windows here, but I do have to paint the front side of them to match our color in here. And then the back side, I'm actually gonna be painting white to match the exterior window color. So that way they look like they're trimmed white on the outside. I also did wanna bring up some of the comments in the last video. I saw a bunch of people commenting about how this hutch just feels way too big in the room. And I don't know if maybe the perception on camera makes the hutch look bigger, but every single person, because after I saw that video and saw so many comments, I asked a bunch of my friends who came over and Marie and Justin and everyone like, does the hutch feel too big in here? Because I personally never have even questioned it feeling too big. Like it really doesn't feel too big in here. Something I'll say is that the opening right here probably isn't your standard, you know, width of an opening. It is a little smaller, but there also are three different entries to the kitchen. So we have one right through this door, through that door and around the hall as well. This is also a kitchen that we don't really access very often. And I love the scale of the hutch in here. Like I just want to kind of flip the camera around and share it with you guys. I think something else is that when I film from this angle, which is where I filmed from for every other kind of, um, reveal in the previous video, you don't actually see that there is quite a bit of space in front of the coffee table here. So there's about, I'd say maybe four feet here or so. Um, but when you're back here, it does kind of make it look a little bit more cramped where it looks like this is right up on the couch and right up on the coffee table. When in reality, I personally feel like it, it feels nice to me. Like I could walk all through here, walk around here. There is enough space to definitely get around in the room. Um, and it's not a room that you're going to be doing activity in per se. You more so, you know, are using the sofa to watch the TV. And I wanted to get the maximum size of TV in here. And I feel like this upper section of the hutch, once we create our pullout screen, is going to give us that. So, okay, so we have the hutch here. And as you guys know, I originally had that kind of wickery stuff on the inside with the metal. Now, this left side over here is actually what I'm kind of wanting to do. And this is another thing that shows up so poorly on camera. This color in here, I can even tell in the, like the screen, is so vibrant. I don't know why it looks so different from the actual wood because it doesn't look like that in person. Like even when I walk out of frame, it's a little bit more of the correct color. So I don't know. The camera's just weird. So essentially, I'm going to be putting this raffia cloth, which comes on a roll, onto some pre-cut pieces of wood that we actually had cut at Lowe's. Really thin sheets of wood, had them cut down to the exact size of the insert, and then we spray painted the front side of them a dark brown. That way when we layer the raffia cloth over it, it just kind of deepens the color a tiny bit so that it doesn't have like a light backing to kind of channel a light color, because uh, the raffia cloth is kind of see-through. So we are going to be spraying the front of all of these placing the raffia cloth on top of it, letting it dry, and then just inserting them into this hutch so that way this entire top section is going to be completely closed off storage and we're gonna use this for all of our games because we have so many games like Monopoly, Life, all of the games are gonna be going in this top section of the cupboard. So I'm gonna be using some Gorilla Glue spray and oh my gosh, do you guys remember when that girl got that Gorilla Glue spray in her hair? Mm, make sure not to do that. But then I'm going to be using raffia cloth. I picked this up at the local basket supply store, which I know it's kind of hard to link products like this. So if you are in Los Angeles, it is the Canaan Basket Supply in Mid-City. I absolutely love that store. The owner's incredible as well. And once that raffia cloth was nice and adhered, I just popped that wood panel in the backside. And then I actually used a framing tool, which I am new to. Justin actually showed me one of these. It is so cool. I had no idea there were framing tools like this, but if you are into framing or or into DIY projects, it's definitely a tool that can come in handy. So I'll link below the one that we ended up using and I finished this process for the other doors.
This looks incredible with the raffia cloth in the top, and I do apologize again about the lighting. It is just such a hard room to film, especially when it's raining and pouring outside, which it currently is at the moment. Um, but I love the way that this looks. I also like how it kind of ties back in with our light. We have some lightness going on. And then we also have some of the lightness in the stripe here in the plaid. So we have like the cream there, we have the cream in the wood here, and then we have the cream up here. We're also transferring it kind of into some of these pillows as well. Behind the longest part of the sofa, we just taped off this long line with some frog tape because we're actually going to be doing a shelf all the way across here because something needs to hold the projector. And I also want to have an area that I could add a couple pieces of decor and styling and just make the place feel a little bit more um, me, if that makes sense. We picked up some pine boards from Lowe's, just the select ones, so they were nice and straight, and some simple L brackets that we're going to be attaching them to the wall with and then painting it the same color as the walls. So it kind of acts as a makeshift floating shelf without having to create a full-on floating shelf. Here's one of the shelves, and we put the brackets on the top side of the shelf, that way when we mount it on the wall, the shelf weight is going to be more so supported, it doesn't have a chance to bend forward at all, and we're also not planning on putting a ton of stuff on the shelf, mainly just to support the actual projector and then like some decor, and then we'll cover the brackets with paint, the board with paint, so hopefully we'll all blend in, and then just kind of strategically place decor over the top of the brackets. Now because I have a very old home with plaster walls, I actually wasn't able to use a stud finder properly, so I just knocked on the wall and then was able to find the studs based off the sound, and then I used a tiny tiny drill pit to just drill in behind basically where the shelf would be, just to make sure that some sawdust came out, and that was the way that I was able to achieve screwing this shelf into the studs. I'm not going to be putting a whole bunch on the shelf, but I did want to have a nice sturdy shelf in case we do add things later, and the brackets on the top side of the shelf are going to be painted same color as the wall and then decorated over the top of. So to continue the length of the shelf, I'm actually going to be cutting an additional piece of wood, which is right here. And this one's cut to size to the exact length that we want it to continue the shelf. And then at the end, I'm actually going to round this end so it doesn't kind of like jut out of the wall and look like just, you know, a pointy corner of a shelf. I want it to kind of round back so it looks like it flows into the wall. The reason that I actually had to use two different shelves was because I could not fit a 12 foot long board in my car. So I actually had to get an eight foot and then another eight foot, which I cut down to size. And this is what the shelf ended up looking like in the end. I gave it two coats of the same exact color of paint, which is Rojo Maroon by Sherwin Williams. So let's get into the actual movie part of this movie room, and that's going to be what is going to hold our screen. So this hutch here, I want to double, of course, as a beautiful piece of furniture to hold all of our games and other things. Then I was thinking about actually having a TV in the top portion of it. And then I was thinking, why don't we have a projector screen in these drawers? So what I did was I just marked along those drawers the width that I actually needed to cut out with the jigsaw. And I'm just using a jigsaw just to notch out about a three and a half inch wide section on each of those drawers, because we are going to be connecting those drawers up together and kind of fastening them to each other. And it's going to be able to be pulled out as one full drawer with the projector inside. So this is what the little notch out of that shelf ended up looking like. We however did still have one issue, which was that center support beam that's kind of separating the two different drawers. I went in with my Dremel 
blade thingy. I don't exactly know the name of this. And the wood was just so hard that I actually ended up using a drill and I drilled a bunch of holes in a line to kind of weaken up that line. And then I used a hammer to hammer that away. But there were pegs on the top and bottom, which is why it ended up being a hard piece to remove. But once I got it out of there, we were able to put the projector screen in the drawers and fully close the drawers. And it worked exactly how I was kind of envisioning in my head. This is what it looks like when you open it back up. And I actually used the wood that I cut away from the drawers and I sandwiched two pieces together and just screwed the two drawers together in the front, just like this. Get ready for what I'm about to share with you guys. So we rigged up the cabinet. All up in here, we have open storage, of course, for all of the games, which we're gonna be putting inside of these shelvings. But let's say, oh, you wanna watch a movie. You wanna watch TV. You wanna watch a game show. You can open up the drawer like so. And then when you're done watching your movie or game show, and also there is a shelf underneath the camera right now, which is exactly where the projector is sitting. So if you can imagine you, where you are right now is a projector projecting right here. You're done watching a movie. You're like, oh, I'm over watching movies. I don't, I need to go to work. Like, then you can just put that away and work in a nice, pretty environment. I don't even know how we did this. Like, I don't know how that idea came to be. Well, actually I do. I think Justin, I was, wasn't I literally like, we, oh, we could put the projector in this drawer. We were just discussing, yeah. we were like, we could hang a sheet. We yeah, could, like, we, what we could do to like have a projector screen. Originally we thought a projector on top. On top, like we were gonna like actually mount the case of the projector on top and then like be able to pull it down. But then I was like, what if we just hide it in the drawer? Because there's so many drawers and it worked so well. The curtains are done, the shelf is behind the couch, the couch is in the room, the rug's down. We have the hutch and the actual movie situation of the movie room complete, and now it's just time to decorate. So let's get to decorating. And this floor lamp is so cool. I've had this kind of hidden away from you guys just because I want to have some pieces that you haven't seen before kind of pop up in the room makeovers. And this, I actually got it from Badlands Vintage from her store and I love it. It's completely handmade. Um, it's like a teak wood light that has these handmade shades in it. And I want to turn it on and show you guys what it looks like on. Like how great does that look in here? And I feel like it just adds a nice warm kind of ambiance and glow to the space as well. I love it next to the plaid curtains. And then right next to this, I'm actually going to be doing an accent chair as well. Here's the accent chair guys. And you guys might have seen this one um, because this, actually I got both of these pieces from Badlands, believe it or not, and the table upstairs, but I love them. And I really, really, really love this chair. I've always wanted one of these rounded reed chairs. But just look how cute, right? I feel like it just feels so nice over here. And then maybe even a little side table right here with maybe some flowers or something. And then some coffee table styling. And then we have to style the shelf, the sofa. I love how linear and how graphic it is over here. We have so many lines in the plaid and the mullions that we added. The chair is all like rounded lines. We have lines in this piece here. I love all of the lines, but they're going in all different directions, but it doesn't feel overwhelming, if that makes sense. It just feels interesting. When it came to styling the shelf behind the couch, there was really two things I had to keep in mind. The first one is that we are wanting to hide all of those brackets with some decor. So I kind of have to strategically place the decor pieces around those. And the other thing is that we are going to be having the projector on this shelf. So I did add the projector right over a bracket, which was great. So we were able to hide one of those. And then I just started pulling things that I have been collecting from flea markets, antique shops, thrift stores over the years. All of the things that I have been keeping in my little Lone Fox rooms and storage rooms rooms and I also have some of the new arrivals over on lonefox.com in here there's some really really cute pieces so definitely check out the site if you happen in a bit If you need something to make your wood furniture look 
80,000 times better. You need this product, guys. I will link it below for you. It is Howard's Feed and Wax. It is a wood polish and conditioner made from beeswax and orange oil, and it just brought life back to this table. There were so many people in the last video also saying, like, this table needed refinished, and I even thought it might need refinished too, but look how pretty it looks. Looks incredible when we just rewaxed it. If you guys remember this incredible candelabra, it's like a gothic candelabra. I found it at the flea market for $40 a couple months back. And I have been saving this for this wall because I just feel like this wall is so large. I want to put one thing on it that's just really kind of focal and interesting. It's also sculptural and it's going to add a nice glow if we do turn the candles on. So I'm going to mount this kind of off center on this wall. She's ready to be mounted. That was inappropriate, honestly. In this back corner of the shelf, I'm actually drilling a hole wide enough for our power cord to go through because I did want to add a cord cover and an actual power source up there, so I just ran a power cord up, used the cord cover, and painted over the top. Good morning, guys. It is reveal day, and I spent a couple hours this morning kind of just playing around with the decor. I'm always someone that places it first, and then I need to, like, sit on it for a bit and then kind of rearrange it, see what's working and see what's not working, and then kind of edit from there. So I spent this morning kind of redoing some of the decor up here. As you can see, I added our incredible oil painting, which I don't know if I actually shared this with you guys, but I got this quite a while back, and it was actually a damaged oil painting that I had it repaired. Just look at that piece, you guys. I've always wanted an oil painting of a portrait of someone I had no idea who it is, but they're always scary. He, though, gave me very genuine calming vibes, and so I thought it was perfect for the space, but I am very excited to reveal this to you. Like, it is one of my craziest designs for sure, and it's also one of my favorite designs I've ever done. I really do feel like it's interesting, and it also really does feel almost like a theater room. Like, it really has that vibe, especially with the alabaster pendant that shines upwards. I just, you guys are gonna have to see it for yourself. So let me reveal the movie room to you guys in three, two, one. Mm -hmm. 